Hello everyone and welcome to my stock career let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and in this episode we begin with a quick Minmus sample return mission meaning that we're going to land this probe on Minmus we're going to do this science junior we're going to do these goo containment units and then try to bring them back to Kerbin because they have a better value as far as science data units is concerned if you bring them back now the heat shield I've got on here does not have its full ablator, it's only got 100 ablator and we're hoping that that will be enough. And uh, yeah, this is the lander unit up here and then of course uh, this stage will get us into orbit and also transfer us to Minmus and the bottom stage is just to give us a start. Uh, in total I've budgeted 4,000 to get into orbit, 1,000 to transfer to Minmus, two, uh, 300 to get into orbit around Minmus, 300 to land, 300 to take off again, and 300 to get back home. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. But uh, in certain areas it's generous, in certain other bits it's a little bit tighter. But uh, add that all up and you get 6,200 meters per second and that's what we've got. So let's see how it works out for us. Throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Gonna do a little tilt here and just smoothly start to do our pitch maneuver. Now at some point I'll tell you how to do a KOS script for all this. KOS is a mod that lets you script the any uh, tell your rocket to follow any particular program that you write for it. And the language is perfectly suited to Kerbal Space Program. There are other mods so that you use stuff like Python in order to write programs for your rockets. But uh, that will take a little bit more learning. The language of KOS is uh, deliberately suited to running rockets in KSP. Okay. Oh no! Flip. And recover. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take over now. <laughs> I don't think we have enough reaction wheel control to save this. Talking away, not paying attention to what's going on. I'll tell you. Let's see. Oh, no. Well, um, let's let's do the science junior here. I mean, we haven't really recovered it from here, have we? And we haven't really recovered the goo in flight either. Look on the bright side. And maybe we can recover this part too. I think the parachute can handle all of this. Note that I use these commutrons, and that's so, well, we can't communicate because of line of sight. But that's so that uh, we can use them in the atmosphere and they won't snap. Okay, so let's just recover. So it was a staging problem. I really needed to light the LV-909 immediately and not uh, have that separate staging. Anyway, we got 15 science out of it, so it's not a total loss. And we recovered a fair amount of the funds. I decided that that rocket needed some work and to try something completely different. And here is a rocket to rescue a Kerbal from orbit around the moon. So we've got a Kerbal stranded in orbit around the moon. That wasn't my fault that the game created that Kerbal. Uh, but we need to rescue that Kerbal so we have a probe core on top and an empty Mark 1 command pod there and we've got uh, the use of uh, strap-on SRBs for the first time so they're going to give us an initial boost giving us a thrust to weight ratio off the ground of 1.6 which is reasonably quick and we are going to want to rendezvous with the Kerbal. Altogether it's reading a delta V of 6465 and basically what we've, we're looking at is 4,000 to get to orbit, probably it'll be less than that, but 4,000 to get to orbit, let's say 1,000 to transfer to the moon, um, 300 to make orbit around the moon, uh, 300 to rendezvous with the Kerbal, and 300 to get back home, 
and even with all of that that's 5,900 so we should be able to do it with what we've got here assuming we don't flip so let's try and not flip this time and also let's stage the LV99 at the same time as that separation okay so here we go and launch so the benefit of SRBs is that they're cheap and at this stage they're reasonably high thrust though they're not as obviously beneficial as they ought to be compared I mean in real life they're rather more beneficial but we're using the center LV T45 to steer and that's getting a little bit wobbly uh, so just hold surface velocity so that we don't wobble okay booster separation and there they go <laughs> Well, we weren't, uh, we didn't have any parachutes on them, so we weren't trying to bring them back. Just coasting up now. So, use of the baguettes, these external tanks that come with part, uh, come as part of uh, making history. Those are handy in this case, just uh, slap them on the side. There is a little bit of clipping, but that's just for looks. You could extend them out all the way if you want to. Of course, that would entail a little bit more drag. Well, we need to give the LV-909 some time to do the remainder of the burn. And that's going to be about 1,000 meters per second we need from it. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. And I think it's time to discuss why I keep the orbits low. And I've sort of done this burn in stages to make sure our apoapsis doesn't get too high. Even though we're eventually going to want to make our apoapsis high because we're transferring to the moon and the reason for that is the Oberth effect and the Oberth effect is just a calculation sort of feature uh, it's it's not some sort of magical thing not some sort of physical uh, mystery or anything like that it's just a matter of how kinetic energy is calculated a kinetic energy is calculated one half mass times your velocity squared not your velocity but your velocity squared now, our velocity right now is 2,265 meters per second in orbit around here. Um, technically, our velocity vector is straight. It is actually going this way. And it's Kerbin's gravity that is pulling us this way. And it just occurred to me that we might not have enough antennae on here. Uh-oh. Okay, but back to the Oberth effect while we are waiting for a signal and decide what to do about this situation um, so if you add more delta V to this right now you get a situation where you've got the velocity the current velocity plus a new delta V so it's an a plus B situation and in algebra we were supposed to have learned that if you have a plus B and you square it you do not get a squared plus B squared you get a squared plus 2ab plus B squared the 2ab is the Oberth effect, if you will. Uh, so when you're calculating the energy of your orbit, you're getting more out of it, this extra 2ab factor, than you originally thought you were going to get. And note that the size of this additional factor is uh, dependent on your initial velocity, the a. So the higher your initial velocity, the bigger the Oberth effect, the 2ab. And so in order to maximize this additional effect that adds more energy to our orbit just because of how energy is calculated, uh, we want to be going as fast as possible, which means going close to the center of gravity because that's, you know, when you're close to the center of gravity, that's when you're going your fastest. So the net effect of it, uh, when you talk about the energy of your orbit, obviously when you add velocity at your current location you're you're just gonna get that velocity right if I add 100 meters per second now it's gonna be going 2372 to 2373 meters per second uh, but you get the additional energy in terms of the apoapsis so you'll get a bigger boost and that is what happens so that's why we want to be close to Kerbin when we do these burns to the moon because the higher up we are, the less we get this additional 2ab factor, which when you do the math, it's 2 times v, v for velocity, and the delta v. 
So, I mean, you can calculate how big the Earth effect is going to be and how much influence it's going to have on your orbit and all that. But really, as long as you stick to the principle that you want to do prograde and retrograde burns close to the center of gravity and inclination changes away from the center of gravity. So you don't want to do the inclination change close to Kerbin because the inclination change is out of the plane of your current velocity. And the, the faster you're going right now, the more that's going to cost. Maybe we'll just leave this up here as an emergency rescue vehicle for now. Let me uh, go back, uh, put on an antenna, and we'll try this again uh, with it properly, properly equipped. Okay, well, in order to put the antenna on, I had to remove our one launch clamp. So we're now freestanding. Throttle up, SAS is on, and... Let's just get this ready and launch. So we know last time we ended up going a bit high initially and we would like to be a little bit flatter. Uh, but no good having wobbles so let's just hold to prograde right now. Okay, booster set. And booster explosion. Hey, at least we're not leaving garbage around. Ah, I could have dumped the mob propellant. I really shouldn't have carried the mob propellant in here. Okay, we are in space. Let's extend the antenna. So you can see I'm pitching down here and that's just to make sure that our orbit doesn't go out of whack and making sure that we get into a sort of circular sort of situation. Best way to do that is to keep the time to lap laps as close to zero, especially in this phase. Okay, that's fine. 84 by 76. All right, antenna is out, so let's plot for the moon. So, taking a look at where the moon is, it's right there. And we don't have much inclination to it, which is great, but still, it, I, if you had a lot of inclination, you could still try the off-plane transfer using the descending node. And even though we don't have much of an inclination with it, I'll still use the ascending and descending node as the place where I do my transfer. Because it so happens to be the right timing anyway. Now we have to take into consideration what kind of orbit Elfil is in. So here we can see our descending node there is negative 18.8 degrees. Well, we, we don't want to have that much of an inclination when we get over there with respect to Elfil. So we're going to use MechJeb's Maneuver Node Editor to really fine tune this. Now, prograde and retrograde burns are better when we're closer to the center of gravity, which means, uh, let, let's just test that quickly. So getting into orbit around the moon with a low periapsis here, oh, control locked. You make me sad. Okay, fine. Uh, but in theory, getting into orbit around the moon from here should cost less than getting into orbit around the moon at a high orbit, but we'll check that. But it probably won't be too much of a difference, so we'll probably just set up with the high orbit first to rendezvous with Alpha a little bit easier. Comsats are at their apoapsis, and we're here. So why can't we communicate with the Comsat? Do, we don't need a relay antenna, right? We, uh, one of these is fine. We've upgraded the tracking station, otherwise we wouldn't have planning and everything. But it sure seems like we don't have enough range. Okay, anyway, let's let's plan this out still. If I capture into orbit now, and let's make sure that the top part of our orbit touches the target orbit. Um, this one costs 174 meters per second, okay? And then if we pull it further away so that we're sort of at the same level as Elfil's orbit here, still doing the retro burn at periapsis. Actually, let's make sure it's more circular-ish. Okay, there. That costs 207. So it costs more to do it this way. But then when you capture low, you're going to have to boost it up again. So 
It's not that big a difference in the end. In this case, I think I would like to do everything right there. Again, in the, uh, the ascending and descending nodes are really handy. So I'm going to fix the inclination at the same time as I do the retro burn. And I'm going to try and do everything at once. Let's see. So on this burn, I've made orbit around the moon. I'm fixing inclination and I've plotted a rendezvous. So now we have a higher orbit than our target, but that's so that we can meet it up, meet up with it over here so that it can catch up with us. And if your orbit is askew sideways, you use the blue ones. That's why I have this radial component here. That's because since I was burning at this point instead of our periapsis, our orbit was askew with respect to the target orbit. At least we're not risking a Kerbal on this. Risking some funds though. Okay. So here we have the spark engine. Doing a lot of the work. You can see 2,200 meters per second here. And double clicking on the moon to focus. We want to make sure that we have the approach we've planned even though the timing was a little bit off on the start of the burn. Close to the end of the burn I don't want Smart ASS wandering with the maneuver node, so I turn it off and use SAS instead and manually control it. Well, that's a definitely different orbit than we initially plotted, and that should change things. But we want to make sure that the sending node is right on there. Okay, so now again I'll plot. And I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to, whoa, that's too much. Or not enough. Okay, not enough. And see, now our orbit is askew. So I'm going to tug on the light blue ones. And also make sure we actually get into orbit. We need a little bit of an inclination change here. And since it is descending, I pull up. Okay, and then we need to bring it back down again. And there we are. So the orange markers indicate that we're really close right there. And that's one kilometer there. So, and our relative velocity with respect to the target will be 45 meters per second. The total burn is 286, which is a lot more than just capturing into orbit uh, either close to the moon or far away from the moon but it corrects the inclination at the same well it hasn't actually corrected the inclination quite yet we need to flatten that out tweak it a little bit more I'm not using the maneuver node editor I'm just using the scroll wheel to fine-tune this Um, doesn't seem to be getting what I want, so I'm going to go with this one and hopefully we can get closer over here. I want to be within render range, so two kilometers, and that'll be fine. Alright, but communication. Communication is key. So backspace to follow our spacecraft again, instead of being focused on the moon. And let's see how this looks. Maybe this needs a relay too? The, the stock com that I don't entirely understand because I'm used to remote tech. This is a heck of an orbit by the way. Look, it's coming back in like this and doing all sorts of business. But anyway, um, yeah, maybe I'm just getting confused with remote tech. But I could have sworn that using one of these would let me relay through comsat1 okay now to execute the meticulously plotted rendezvous burn and orbital burn and with the mechjeb displays we can see our closest approach distance here so we don't have to check the map or anything and we can see the relative inclination going down you can see every now and again we phase correctly with our target okay one point five kilometers is what I was expecting and that's what we've got and so we'll have our closest approach in three hours and 13 minutes 
Okay, we are now in render range. So I'm going to have target negative relative velocity, not negative target. So that marker when we've got target there. And note how the closest approach distance is changing. So once that gets to a minimum again, and it basically hit 400 meters and started going up, that's when I want to turn towards the target. And I'm going to turn off Smart ASS. That was just a convenience. It didn't really matter. And I want to make sure the prograde vector is right on the target. So you can see it's right on there. It'll drift. Uh, but considering our closest approach distance is 13 meters, it's not going to drift that much. If the closest approach distance is more than that, let's say it turns out to be a kilometer because the initial sort of situation was a little bit weird, then that prograde marker will drift away from the target marker and then in order to make sure you get a better closest approach distance you'll need to readjust. If the prograde marker is over on this side then you want to do the burn over here to sort of pull the prograde marker over there. But don't go too fast though. So you want to make sure your time to closest approach stays moderate and you're not like closing within a few seconds kind of thing. Uh, Two minutes is fine. Anything over two minutes should give you enough. With the stock engine, should give you enough time to slow down. But you you know monitor your speed. But you can see the prograde vector drifting away. But in this case, I don't want to go on the opposite side and pull it uh, towards the target vector because that'll speed me up, and we are already going too fast. So instead, I'm gonna go over here and go on the opposite side here see uh, this is sort of the reverse because it's it is the reverse side and I'm gonna nudge it towards the target like that and I'm gonna stay retrograde here now we have a close approach distance of 1.3 meters which is fairly darn close when it comes to rendezvous and docking uh, patience is key so don't rush things the more velocity you have, the more you have to kill off. So if you try and go fast towards the target, you're eventually going to have to use more fuel to slow down. So it, it all ends up hurting. The slower you can stand to approach, the better off you'll be. So we're, we're at 5 meters. I think we can just park. And here it gives you your more exact relative velocity, but now we're actually moving away by 29 millimeters per second, but that's fine. Elfel Kerman, we can now control. EVA, a scientist. Well, we could use a scientist. The rescue missions are nice, of course, because you don't have to pay to hire the Kerbals. The Kerbals are very expensive otherwise. Board. All right. Well, we can now leave the moon. Right, save Elfel Kerman is checked. Now we have to recover Elfel on Kerbin. So, a little reminder about how to get back. Since we are going prograde around the moon, which means counterclockwise, we will make our maneuver node over here around 11 o'clock, assuming that the movement of the moon is in the 12 o'clock direction. So the moon is moving at 12 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, we pull, we break orbit around the moon, and we have a trajectory to get back. But note how it's sort of going askew. You can see that it's taking a lot of uh, velocity to try and get this down. And that's because you can see our outward going orbit is not going at 6 o'clock, so we grab this maneuver. And so that outward going orbit is going to be at 6 o'clock, and that should be a little bit better. Yeah, that should be fine. Kerbin periapsis of 25 kilometers, and costing about 250 meters per second to break orbit here. Technically, uh, with a little bit more power initially, some more launch delta V, if we add more than 30 parts, this, I feel, could be a thing to land on the moon. We'll just land on these baguettes. I like the idea of landing on baguettes after all. And 
you can see we have a lot of delta v left over so just a little bit more initially could possibly make this uh, landing craft for the moon okay we are still in close range of the derelict so let's be careful about that seems like this direction is safe to point in and we're not gonna bump into it so let's start burning okay I don't want target I want orbit people do like to remind me to right click on periapsis there you go <laughs> it's not generally in my flow but we'll do it there and 25 kilometers is fine all right so now we're on the way back we probably you know maybe we can do some science here I don't know I we haven't even done a crew report really let's just keep it mm, EVA EVA report keep board we were in high orbit anyway so those are the only two experiments I think we can do and of course with the 30 part limit we couldn't carry any other science that's my main concern right now finally unlocking the VAB to get more than 30 parts honestly we could actually reduce our orbit directly here and not even have a full return from the moon situation we've got 1230 meters per second we could get into low carbon orbit if we wanted to so this definitely had more than enough fuel but for now we'll do the mission as spec'd oh and I could have more if I had dumped the mod propellant let's not uh, have any mission creep here okay we just want to separate off the service module which is what this is separation surface negative velocity is what we want here of course it's not necessary to tell smart ASS to hold it like that but it makes me feel better so we will have loss of communication some heating indication I'm especially keeping an eye on how much ablator we use looks like we'll be landing in the desert so at least we're not gonna be hitting any mountains like right over there well we don't have line of sight with any station I guess but I'm saving up for the VAB upgrade so I'm not gonna launch any more commsats for now unless they tell me to if they give me a contract I'll be glad to we just used 40 ablator so we didn't need to carry a full hundred I think some of the service module parts actually reached the ground judging from those explosions which is an important piece of information it just says moon rescue debris it says the spark engine splashed down hard and was destroyed so yeah they apparently survived re-entry okay well let's not uh, lose the opportunity to do some extra science first of all EVA uh, take the data and uh, board and do that crew report uh, we've done it from the deserts before have we done the we probably haven't done a surface sample EVA report we've done oh we can't do surface sample CMs I guess not I'm not gonna plant a flag here okay let's recover okay well we got 17 signs anyway and more importantly we've got alpha in our ranks so first Kerbal Rescue actually we need to do more of those we can just barely afford the VAB upgrade right now but let's hold off on that um, which building gives us the surface sample I think it's the R&D yeah we have to upgrade the R&D building before we can collect surface samples so we need to save up for that as well taking a look at mission control testing a skipper splashdown does not seem interesting to me 
these temperature surveys pay well, and that that's not a bad. It's not a troublesome altitude, really. But you can get to those altitudes fairly easily. They give us plenty of time to do it too, and the advance is sort of sweet. We've got plenty of space in our contracts. We can get seven in total. Maybe we should try this. It'll take some precision, something or another. I don't know what I'm going to be uh, trying to teach in regard to this, but I think I need the funds at this point. Science data from space around Minmus is easy, but not instructive. Crew report in multiple locations around the moon. Well, let's do a moon landing. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe we should uh, do this sort of thing to prepare for a moon landing, you know, investigate these locations and all that. It just says in space flight, it doesn't say suborbital flight or anything like that. I think that's manageable. It's a bit tedious to have it in all three locations, but, you know. Okay, so now we've got additional contracts. And we are going to be, oh, recover... Save, we've already done a moon rescue, but maybe we could use a few more Kerbals in our space program. There is no reason not to take this contract. Okay, well, alright then. So, we've got some stuff around the moon. Basically, we need to conduct these crew reports, these temperature surveys, plant a flag, rescue Rosie, and explore the moon otherwise, which means walking on the surface and returning to Kerbin. So, that is what I'll be looking to do next time. I'm going to spend the science then as well, so I'm not going to do it right now. But we have done a successful moon rescue mission, and I think I'll leave it at that. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.